In my previous videos, we talked about the basics of lip sync and how to animate lip sync manually. But some of you want to know how to use Adobe Animate's auto lip sync feature. So that's what we're going to look at today. If you're new to lip sync, I recommend watching my introduction to lip sync first because we'll be using a modified version of the mouth chart from that video. I'll leave a download link to the mouth chart in the description below if you want to follow along. And with that said, let's jump into Adobe Animate. Double clicking into the character symbol, you see that I already have my layers set up, except for the audio and mouth layers. First, I want to select the audio layer and import my audio clip here in the properties panel, making sure that it's set to stream in sync settings. If you want to know what that does or how to import audio, I'll leave a link to my Adobe Animate audio tutorial in the description and also top right on screen. And I also want to extend the timeline so it's long enough to play through the entire recording. So that's here. Now get rid of the extra frames. I'll mute the audio layer for now so you can hear me. Um, let's go to the mouth layer next and draw a neutral mouth. I'll select it and turn it into a symbol, which we'll name mouth and making sure graphic is selected as the symbol type, I'll hit OK. While the symbol is still selected, we also want to select play single frame here in the properties panel. If you're unfamiliar with symbols, I recommend watching my introduction to symbols, which I'll link to in the description and top right. Now that we've created the mouth symbol, I'm going to jump a couple steps ahead so you have an idea of what mouth shapes we're going to need. With the mouth symbol still selected, you'll see a button labeled lip syncing at the bottom of the properties panel. Clicking on this will bring up a window where you can match mouth shapes in our mouth symbol with its corresponding sound. At the moment, we only have one drawing inside our mouth symbol, but we now know that we'll need mouth shapes for R, D, E, F, and so on. So let's go ahead and add those to our mouth symbol before coming back to this. Double clicking to open the mouth symbol, you can see that the mouth we drew earlier is on a single layer and it has its own keyframe on the timeline. What we want to do now is add the rest of the mouth shapes as new keyframes along the timeline. It's a good idea to turn onion skinning on at this point to make sure that the mouth shapes are drawn in the correct position. If you're not sure what keyframes or onion skins are, you should probably watch my frame by frame animation tutorial before continuing. With that said, I'll be referring to the mouth chart for the rest of the mouth shapes, and you can see that we've already done the neutral mouth. So the next thing we want to draw is the R mouth, which is this one right here. We'll start by inserting a blank keyframe right after the neutral mouth, and because onion skinning is turned on, we can still see the previous mouth shape on the stage. An important thing to keep in mind when drawing these mouth shapes is that the top of the mouth doesn't move very much. Watch yourself in the mirror and you notice that your bottom jaw does most of the moving. So when I draw this mouth, I'm keeping the top of the mouth lined up with the previous drawing. It's basically the same thing for the rest of the mouth shapes. Create a blank keyframe, draw the next mouth shape and repeat. So I'm going to speed through this. When you're done, it's a good idea to label each mouth shape. You can do this by clicking on a keyframe and then typing in the label here at the top of the properties panel. We'll label this mouth neutral because it's the neutral mouth and, oh, I've spelled it wrong. You see the label show up in the timeline when you press enter. Um, it's a bit tight now, but you can zoom in using this slider over here, which will let you see the labels. And if you want to reset the timeline view, you can click on this icon. Boop. I'll quickly go through and add labels to the rest of the mouth shapes using the mouth chart as a reference. Uh, so this one should actually be neutral, D and S. And I'll expand it a bit more. This one is R and so on. Okay, now that we've got all the mouth shapes on their own keyframes and labeled inside the mouth symbol, we can start matching the mouth shapes to their sounds. I'll reset the timeline and exit the mouth symbol. 
With the mouth symbol selected, we'll go back into the properties panel and click on lip syncing here at the bottom. In the pop-up window, clicking on any of the thumbnails will let you select the matching mouth shape for each of these sounds. And you can see that we now have all the mouth shapes inside the mouth symbol available to select. You can also see our labels underneath the thumbnails, which is pretty helpful. Let's go ahead and select the R mouth shape here, and then keep going matching the D mouth with the D mouth shape, the E mouth with the E mouth shape, and so on. You notice that we're reusing some of the mouth shapes? That's simply because I think the mouth shape works for both sounds. When you finish setting up the mouth shapes, select the audio layer. This name should match up with the name of your audio layer. In my case, it's audio and audio. And now when I click done, you'll see a whole bunch of keyframes appear on the mouth layer. What's happened here is Adobe Animate has tried its best to recognize the sounds in the audio clip and match it with the right mouth shape. If you look at the timeline, it's also labeled every keyframe it created using the labels that we set up in the mouth symbol. Let's see how it looks. Just remembering to unmute the audio. I'm speaking slowly and clearly to give auto lip sync a shot. Eh, it kind of did okay. Let's take a closer look at what they've done. I'll expand the timeline a bit so you can see the labels. That's actually not bad. I'm... See, they got the M in I'm speaking. I'm... They got the S as well, which is pretty good. Speaking... Um, it would have been good to have a closed mouth here for the P, like this one maybe. When you say P, you have your lips pressed together usually. Speaking, speaking, slowly. I don't know. Um, I'd probably give that a 4 out of 10, to be honest. Well, that's that, I guess. And you may or may not be happy with these results. But as you've just seen, you can always go in and make changes manually after letting auto lip sync do its thing. Personally, I'd rather do auto lip sync myself manually because I find it quite frustrating fiddling around with the results of auto lip sync. But if you do decide to use auto lip sync, try to use an audio clip that only contains dialogue because auto lip sync will match every sound it hears, including background music and sound effects. Needless to say, it'll work better with higher quality audio and clear dialogue, so keep those in mind when recording and preparing your audio file. You might also find that your results will vary depending on your accent. That wraps up auto lip sync in Adobe Animate. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I made this video because some of you asked for it, so if you want me to cover something, talk about some topic, feature, animation thing you want to learn leave it in the comments below and maybe i will as always thank you for watching and goodbye have a nice weekend it's cold here that's why i'm wearing gloves not sure why i'm telling you that see ya